I'm Justin McRoberts, and you are listening to the Title Pending Audio Series, a collection of readings focused on moments in my own creative history that I hope shed an inspired light on yours. Part 4. Course Corrections. Chapter 14. You really do want to be critiqued. A few years ago, I was asked to be a contributing artist at a songwriting retreat. One of my responsibilities was to offer constructive feedback to retreat attendees who'd submitted songs ahead of time. I was emailed a batch of 10 songs to critique along with a short note from the retreat coordinator. Be nice, he wrote. We don't need to compare these folks to the Beatles. His concern was that negative feedback would sully the retreat experience of his guests, as well as be detrimental to their creative process. And as much as I understood his concern, I think it's a mistake to directly correlate critique with negativity. Good critique is helpful. That said, I'm also entirely convinced that being nice has just as much negative potential as being negative. If I asked you to honestly critique something of mine and you responded with, this is bad, I don't like it, that would be pretty unhelpful. But it wouldn't be unhelpful because it was negative. It would be unhelpful because it didn't give me any direction for how to improve it. It's not specific at all. And more importantly, it doesn't provide me with ways to make my work better, which is what good critique does. Thoughtful, informed critique includes specifics, handles to hold, sometimes even alternative suggestions. The difference between negativity and critique is like the difference between saying you aren't good at parking cars and saying your car is currently parked in the middle of a busy intersection. The engine seems to be running. I can do something with the latter comment. I can move my car. Midway through that songwriting retreat, one of the other contributing artists shared a story that, in my estimation, clearly detailed the danger of expecting niceness rather than seeking critique. Upon arrival, one of the participants whose song he had critiqued approached him, infuriated. The student said, I don't understand the feedback you gave me. The teacher replied, well, let's take a look at it and see if I can make it clearer. To which the student replied, no, I don't get why I got negative feedback at all. The teacher said, oh, okay, which song was it? The participant handed over the critique sheet for a song I can only assume was called Glorious Song of Exceeding Excellence. The teacher said, ah, yes, well, like I wrote here, I felt like the bridge was really disconnected and that the melody wandered quite a bit. The student responded, listen, I woke up with this whole song in my mind and put it down exactly the way I heard it in my sleep. God gave me this song in a dream. <laughs> the teacher said, God gave you this song? The student replied, yes. To which the teacher replied, well, have you considered then that maybe God may have given you this song because he didn't like it either? Maybe you were supposed to fix it. Along with confusing his moment of inspiration with the actual work of creating, this particular retreat attendee seemed to have confused critique with negativity, or perhaps he had no real interest in improving his craft so much as feeling affirmed in it. And that is fine, to be honest, if he's journaling. But if it doesn't matter to him what other people think, feel, or believe about his work, then I don't think he's actually songwriting. He's not making art. After a year or two of wearing my running shoes on the trail, my friend John challenged me to invest in actual hiking boots similar to the ones he wore. He said, you're just not getting the traction you should, especially on looser ground. Not to mention the wear and tear in your knees. The shoes you're wearing aren't designed to do the work you're doing with them. Besides being perfectly satisfied with my chosen footwear, i had been saving money to buy a pair of Doc Martens. A hiking boot purchase would have set that plan all the way back. I was disappointed and unwilling, but John knew better than I did. And I knew that. If I wanted to become a more adept hiker, I was going to not just need the encouragement, but also the critique of more experienced and wiser folks like my friend John. If and when you hand a piece over to someone and it comes back marked up with red pen, metaphorically or literally, give yourself a moment to freak out if you need to. Feel free to tell yourself you failed at something you love and even let yourself be horrified at your failure. Sit down, lie down, roll around on the floor and curse the muses for being such deceptive tramps. But when it's all over, get off the floor and pick up your critiqued piece, red ink and all. Look over it again, more slowly this time. Then pick a place to start and get back to work. You're an artist 
And that means you make art, which is a process and critique is a part of that process. Thank you for listening to this episode of the title pending audio series. If you've enjoyed listening and you'd like to take another step or two in the direction of your own creative process, navigate your way to yourcreativeprocess.info. And there you'll find an online course I've designed for you.